A Kate News investigation turned into state law. We listen to your concerns. Why do I need to pay you even more? That's another fine on top of a fine. We did the digging. Daniel was one of more than 200,000 Kansans with suspended licenses, about half of them right here in Sedgwick County. And we got lawmakers' attention. It brought my attention to it when the Kate News story uh, was done in October. Kate News investigates, gets answers. Kate News, always on your side. Now tonight's Cake News investigation on suspended driver's licenses. You might be surprised how easily it could happen to you. A simple parking ticket, a moving violation, a missed deadline, and the fines start piling up. Our Pilar Pedraza uncovers that more than 100,000 Kansans are stuck in a system driven by dollars. This investigation started when I got a speeding ticket. It happens, but then I missed a deadline I didn't even realize I was facing and I got this from the city of Wichita, a letter warning me the city was about to suspend my driver's license if I didn't pay up immediately. Now I was able to come up with the cash and pay the fines and fees, but it all got me wondering just how many other people had this happened to, how many hadn't been able to find the money in time or hadn't even gotten the warning, and how much does it cost everyone else? They sent me a letter in the mail saying that my license was suspended and here we are 10 years later. Daniel Lawrence thought after paying his fine, he was good to drive again. Instead, he got a ticket for driving on a suspended license. A decade later, he still can't afford to pay that fine or the court fees, late fees, and reinstatement fees that have added up over the years. Me and my wife just filed bankruptcy, so how can I pay $2,000 if I can't even pay all my other bills, let alone get my driver's license back. I've seen people with more than $10,000 accumulated because, you know, 2,500 bucks a whack, it starts adding up pretty quick. Former traffic court judge Phil Journey has heard hundreds of stories like Daniel's. He says it often starts with a simple mistake, a missed deadline or a wrong address. Then trying to get things straightened out is difficult. Uh, it takes specific knowledge that many people simply don't have and don't know how to find out. As of June of this year, Daniel was one of more than 137,000 Kansans with suspended licenses, roughly half of them right here in Sedgwick County. That's about 5% of all Kansas drivers. So the next time you're out on the highway, take a look around you. Odds are that somebody in one of the vehicles has a suspended license. They have no way to get to work or pick up their kids or go to the doctor. Legally drive anywhere. While researching racial profiling concerns in Wichita, Dr. Walt Chapel stumbled on the number of suspended licenses in Sedgwick County years ago. He says state law is a big part of the problem. There's a whole tangled web of procedures the bureaucrats have figured out to keep people tied up in knots for years. Nationwide, states are starting to change that. More than 600,000 drivers in Virginia will be able to drive again. Virginia just outlawed suspending driver's licenses for unpaid fees and fines. Six months of fee amnesty to suspended drivers. While Ohio is in the middle of a statewide amnesty program. In California, there was about $60 million they collected by going through an amnesty program. Since 2010, Chapel has been trying to get similar legislation passed here in Kansas, setting up an amnesty program, allowing folks to work off their original fines through charity work or payment plans while getting rid of some of those late fees. But he says court clerks have blocked his efforts so far. Court clerks come in and say, that's our money. It's right there in the legislation. In the 2020 Wichita City budget, the municipal court gets $7.8 million from the city's general fund. The city expects fines and fees paid to the court, including traffic violations, to put more than $8.1 million back into the general fund. That's a net profit for Wichita, more for some small towns. You know, there's a recent article in Governing Magazine that talks about little bitty towns that basically run their town on fines and court costs. The reinstatement fees, they, there shouldn't be a reinstatement fee. If you already gave me my fine, my license is suspended, that should be gone. Why do I need to pay you even more? That's another fine on top of a fine. Which leaves Daniel still out in the slow lane, with no hope of getting his license back this year. It's very irritating and upsetting. A chapel may get some help this year in his push to change state law when it comes to suspending driver's licenses. There's a legislative subcommittee on criminal justice reform that also wants to make it a priority. In Wichita, Pilar Pedraza, Cake News, investigates. So what can you do in the meantime? When you get a ticket, wait a day for the officer to file the paperwork. Then call the court. 
That simple contact can make a big difference in the amount of time you have to pay your fines. For more details, go to Pilar's video with the Wichita Police Department on our Facebook page. All right, much different topic now. About 213,000 Kansans have a suspended driver's license. Almost half of those drivers are right here in Sedgwick County. It's a problem Cake News Investigates has been telling you about since last October. Tonight, our Pilar Pedraza takes a look at how state lawmakers are trying to fix things. But it's just simple tickets, you know, parking tickets can make you lose your license. We first introduced you to Daniel Lawrence last October. He's had a suspended driver's license for more than a decade. He and others call the trend out of control, a national epidemic with Kansas at the forefront. Uh, over 200,000 Kansans have suspended driver's licenses and Kansas right now is kind of behind the curve on um, driver's license reform around the country. Something those gathered in this committee room on Thursday are hoping to change this year. We've been talking about suspended driver's licenses uh, for a very long time. I would let you know though, the, the problem has, has uh, grown ex exponentially. Uh, brought my attention to it when the Cake News story uh, was done in October. They were talking about a bill that would remove the extra 90 days of suspension that's currently tacked onto the penalty for someone caught driving already on a suspended license. It would also remove some of the barriers to getting a restricted license that allows folks like Daniel to drive themselves to work, school, or the doctor's office while paying off their fines and fees. In truth, that's going to allow them to pay their rent, their bills. That will also help them, help us as a state, quit paying for all these costs that are associated with uninsured motors who are driving on suspended licenses. The witnesses frequently referred to the Cake News investigation. It ran about uh, two weeks from Cape News talking about the numbers of the thousands of Kansans who are in this predicament. Even those who showed up to testify against the bill supported the general concept. Folks like Daniel just want a way to be able to pay off their fines and get back on the road. Me and my wife just filed bankruptcy, so how can I pay $2,000 if I can't even pay all my other bills, let alone get my driver's license back. Meanwhile, everyone I spoke with on the committee says Kansas does have a problem with suspended driver's licenses, and they're committed to finding a fix this year. From the State House, Pilar Pedraza with the Cake News Investigates. A new law could help solve what some call an epidemic of suspended driver's licenses in Kansas. Good evening, I'm Deb Ferris. And I'm David Scott. This is a story Cake News investigator Pilar Pedraza has been following for more than a year now. Tonight, the changes that could come with hundreds of thousands of Kansans back behind the wheel legally. I was excited. I called my mom because I'm like, Mom, I'm going to get my license back. Carlita is one of some 213,000 Kansans with suspended driver's licenses. She's excited about a bill the governor signed into law last week that could have her back in the driver's seat in a couple of months. And definitely, I jump for joy. Carlita says it all started when she got pulled over several times for basic traffic violations, but couldn't pay the fines and fees. That's left her struggling to make ends meet. Stories like hers are why Kansas State Senator Aletha Faust-Gudeau says she's fought for years to make it easier for folks like Carlita to pay off their tickets and get their license back. And I'm just so excited about it. The senator says getting more people back behind the wheel legally is good for everyone's pocketbook. Bringing cities more money to work with while hopefully leading to lower insurance rates across the state. To do that, this new law will eliminate the 90 day wait period between paying off fines and fees and being able to apply to get your license back. Expand who can qualify for a restricted license in the application fee for restricted licenses and allow judges to set up payment plans, waive court fees, even accept community service time as payment. People need to be able to um, uh, drive and drive legally with insurance while making payments on their fines. Which is exactly what Carlita already has plans to do once this new law goes into effect July 1st. And she's not alone. I called friends to tell them about it and everything. So it's, it's definitely going to be something big for a lot of people. PR Pedraza with this Cake News Investigates follow-up. The senator still wants to change one more aspect of the law. Currently, most people with suspended licenses, like Carlita, have multiple tickets to get their license back. They have to pay a $100 reinstatement fee for each ticket, which can add up to hundreds of dollars they don't have. The senator wants to lower that to a single reinstatement fee. 
Kansas is a step closer to changing the rules on suspended driver's licenses. Cake News investigator Pilar Pedraza has been following this issue for months. She joins us now with the latest. Deb, lawmakers are talking about three different proposed changes to how the state suspends driver's licenses. This after a Cake News investigation highlighted what some are calling an epidemic. That it would cost me $1,500 then to get my license back. Vicki Munoz is one of more than 213,000 Kansans with suspended licenses. The majority of them due to non-payment of fines and court fees. Like many, she says she simply can't afford the cost of getting her license back. And, and it was a case of if you'd had the money, you could... No, yeah, I'd have my license right now. Tuesday, the Kansas House gave preliminary approval to a plan that would make it a bit easier. It's the second of three bills introduced in the wake of our investigation and would get rid of the current application fee for a restricted driver's license while the person is paying off their fines and fees. It would also cut the time penalty for being caught driving on a suspended license and cut the cost of getting that license back once the sentence is served. This is my 12th year, I've been working on these bills for a long time, and I think it's going to make a tremendous difference in people's lives once we get this problem started and get it resolved. Lawmakers are still looking at two other bills that would also change the state driver's license policies. One would ban suspensions in the case of unpaid fines and fees. The other would make it easier for Kansans to get those restricted licenses, which impacts all Kansans, as more than 80% of Kansans with suspended licenses end up driving anyway. The House will have to give this bill final approval tomorrow before it moves on to the Senate. It's very rare for members to change their minds between the preliminary and final votes, but we'll keep tabs on it for you. Pilar Pedraza with the Cake News Investigates follow-up. Well, new hope tonight for people who have been waiting to get their driver's licenses back. Pilar Pedraza has a Cake News Investigates follow-up from the State House. Pilar. Deb, for the first time, Kansas lawmakers are talking about suspended driver's licenses as more than a law enforcement issue. Today, they were talking about how getting more Kansans behind the wheel can actually put more money into the Kansas economy and your pocketbook. That it would cost me $1,500 then to get my license back. Two years ago, Vicki Munoz told us how having to rely on the city's bus system to get to work limited her ability to earn money and pay her bills. If she could get her license back, she'd have more money to spend on other things, which lawmakers say would help all Kansans do better. Part of why they're now looking at changes to how suspended licenses work here in Kansas with the approval of groups like the Kansas Sheriff's Association. It doesn't make sense to us that you charge a reinstatement fee multiple times for one reinstatement. Yet that's what state law currently does. On average, every suspended license has at least four traffic citations attached to it. And to get a single license back, Kansans have to pay a reinstatement fee for every citation. This bill is one of two that would change that, among other costs. Several groups came out to support the changes, saying it would help grow the state economy, which is suffering after the pandemic. A valid driver's license is a more accurate predictor of sustained employment than a GED or diploma, and then they are twice as more likely to stay employed. Leaving Wichita Senator Aletha Faust-Gudeau, who's been fighting for changes like this since 2012, confident Kansans will soon find it easier to hit the road legally. I didn't hear any strong opposition today, so I am definitely hopeful. Now, this bill would also end the current 90-day waiting period to get your license back after you've paid off all those fines and fees. We'll continue to track this bill and a similar one in the House and let you know what happens as the session moves on. Live from the State House with this Cake News Follows Investigates, Cake News Investigates follow-up, I'm Pilar Pedraza.